Welcome everyone. We're here, we're a little early tonight, but we're both prepared. So we're here talking with Edmund Stone about his new book, Within. It's a little shiny. Oh, you got a copy. Maybe your copy will show yeah. better. Oh, you got a lot of light. Put it up next. Put it up next to it. Go ahead. There we go. How yeah. That, huh? Canada and uh, over I, here. I have a window on the other side of mine. So <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there I'm you getting go. getting a lot of shine. <laughs> <clears throat> that's that's what this glossy covers too. For. <laughs> this is three part horror. We've lost yep. your video. Mm -hmm. Oh, here you there go. There you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um. So, I I'm just curious. Why did you do it as the three three part? Was that written that you just thought would go well together? Um, actually, uh, I, I didn't want it to be like a short story collection, <clears throat> that, but it sort of is. But the the only can you difference, hear me? Is, yeah, I can hear you. Are you? You're lagging a little bit, but I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Am I lagging? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. We're good. Now. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, the way I originally planned it was, I didn't want it to be. I didn't want it to be like an anthology or like well, not an anthology, but like a short story collection. So right. uh, what I was looking for is uh, because I noticed that the stories were there as I wrote them, they started uh, they started having a similar uh, you know tone to them. They all had they all had uh, they all had it was a different story, but they all mm -hmm. had the same thing. You know the the broken woman who comes back and uh, and is able to uh, overcome her adversaries, and she's you know faced with a lot of different things. So. I thought, you know, it might come up better as since it's it's basically it's not really like it's three individual parts, but all the same. So I thought maybe like more like a uh, like a movie or a, or a Broadway or something you know, in three parts. You know, that's so uh, that's kind yeah. of came to mind. And I thought, well, I've never done anything like that before. So let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Um, yeah, and it's worked really well. I see you have yeah. a lot of really good reviews. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. like you said, each story is based around a woman uh, with issues and how they overcome their issues rather violently. Mm, some they do. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, and, and that was another thing uh, with this book. I, I wanted to, um, I kind of wanted to explore a little extreme, a little more extreme than I normally do. Uh, it's by no means an extreme horror book, but it definitely has more, um, uh, you know, more, it, it, there's some, there's some sexual things in there and there's also a lot of blood and, you know, things like that mm -hmm. stuff I told that I don't typically always go to, uh, but you know, I might just touch on it a little bit. This one I dealt, I, I dig pretty deep into a lot of that still of those issues. Um, when I got into that and I started, uh, <clears throat> doing some of that, especially the issues with, uh, especially when the women were involved, I wanted it to be definitely wanted it to be authentic. And I thought, you know, the best way, obviously, would be to get a, a woman to do the beta reading. So uh, mm -hmm. my uh, I had a beta reader and editor, uh, the editor that's listening there, Amber Applegate. Um, she she was my beta reader and she was also my editor during that one. So okay. she, uh, she definitely had a lot of input on that and, and you know, would give me uh, like things. And she'd look at something and say, well, that's not very authentic here. Ad, you should say this. And then I would change right. it up like that. Uh, my wife. That's, that's a good help. Yeah. So yeah, it was great. I mean, because uh, I thought to myself, I've never, never, I've written female characters before, but mm -hmm. never to that level, or you know, never that detailed. So I definitely needed some help with that. Um, and and that you know, it worked out great. I also have a novel that's coming out with D and T Publishing. Um, we can talk about that in a minute, but um, yeah. that uh, has a has a, a female uh, protagonist, and uh, kind of got into some issues there. Not quite, not as extreme as uh, within, but it definitely has some, uh, it, it has some uh, issues here. Well, I say issues, but situations, I should say, that are uh, more woman related. So I definitely had a woman uh, beta read that one for me too. So good. Yeah. And you said your wife, she also reads oh, for you and gives oh, you. Oh, yeah. She, <laughs> like, the way she does her beta reading is she won't, she won't read the whole book because she doesn't really have time to read the whole book most of the time. She's a professor. <laughs> she's got a lot going on. So yeah. uh, I'll, you know, pick out certain issues or certain areas and I'll say, Hey, you know, what about this here? Listen to me, read this and she'll read it. And then she'll give me tips and stuff. So she's pretty good that way. That's very handy. Yeah. Especially being a professor. I'm sure that helps a lot too. It does. 
It does. Yeah, we bounce things off each other quite a bit. So good. <clears throat> I, I'm just actually looking at your Amazon page while we're talking. Oh, sure, go ahead. Uh, I see you have the one. I know this is off topic, but mm -hmm. that has a female on the cover. Was that one female based as well? Uh, not 100%. No. Okay. Because I do have that one in my Kindle to read. I haven't read it yet because I was reading within for this interview. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, the one. <laughs> yeah, the one. <laughs> um, no pun intended. It does have a, a female, uh, one of the, the the girl in it, uh, that's the, basically the girl on the cover there. Um, <clears throat> her name is Nikki Sutton, and um, she is, um, her her dad is, uh, or well, her her dad is Alan Sutton, who was in the first uh, novel, plus then there's Cy Sutton, who's the grandpa. So, okay. uh, so she's connected to all them, but it's this is kind of a, um, a coming of age for her. And there's another character in their name, uh, Peter McNamara, and he's kind of the same way. He's he's kind of a coming of age character. He's an older teen and she's a younger teen, but they kind of they connect in different ways. And, you know, uh, they both become stronger. And in the end, they have to really uh, help each other out to uh, battle the evil of Rebecca, the um, you know, Rebecca, the B Rebecca mythos. You know who Rebecca yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, but it's not, it's not really, I wouldn't say it's a female, 100% female. There's a lot of male characters in that one too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was there something, not that obviously something happened, but was there a reason that you made these three stories about females? Um, well, tip, actually the, the very first one, um, what was originally a different, you know, was originally a story I, I had as just a uh, short story a few years ago. And, uh, I released it that way and I had it out and I, it, it got some decent reviews, but not so great reviews. So there was stuff I just wanted to change it. I wanted to work on that one. Always. Okay. And I, I pulled it off of Amazon, uh, got to working on it. And I thought, you know, maybe I can uh, make it a reader magnet, whatever. Well, these other stories came about. And mm -hmm. while I was writing that one, I got the ideas for these. And then that's when I decided, well, these all have to be together. Well, those stories were also female characters. And so, the very first one i kind of got a feel for that and then the other ones they were just characters i came up with and thought you know i need to really write these characters in a little bit um the the middle one and within harper um her, she was actually hurt was actually a story i had um i think i submitted it to another anthology somewhere <clears throat> and it got rejected mm -hmm. and uh, and and I, I knew what it was i could tell exactly what was what was going wrong with it was it, it was just too short the, uh, you know, most anthologies, you've got a word count uh, situation you got to work with. Yeah. So I went within that parameter and I just think that the story fell flat because of that. It needed more. And so right. I brought it back, started working on it and expanded it into, I mean, it's probably, I think, I think it came out to be like 25, 26,000 words by the time it was done. Yeah, so, because that's one of the longer ones. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then, then the last one was... It, it was kind of a, it was another one. I just had, I never, I hadn't written any of it. And it was just an idea that, that was just floating around with the machete and all that. And so um, I just started writing it. And I said, well, I need another story to round this out. So I just started writing that one. And that one just, boom, I mean, I came out of nowhere. Oh, and perfect. so, it, yeah, I mean, it was great the way that came together. Um, <clears throat> I didn't think I could do that. I was just like, <laughs> I was thinking, well, it's probably just going to be the two. I'll leave it at that. But then that one started getting rolling. I was like, oh, yeah, I've got it. <laughs> yeah, it's always great when they just come out and, and you get to put them all together, right? <clears throat> it really is. But I don't think I went in thinking it was going to be all uh, all female cast. I don't think I was mm -hmm. thinking. It just kind of came out that way, mainly because of the first story and the second story but you know they kind of at once i started writing them and i realized they were so similar because of the characters then i thought well okay we got a theme here and then i started working from there yeah that's great and what um prompted you to bring in voodoo in that last one <laughs> i don't know i love bringing <laughs> but what i did it's just one of those things i love <laughs> <laughs> and, oh no that's good yeah i mean uh I'm, I'm a i've been to new orleans a few times i love new orleans it's just oh, one of awesome places in the world and uh you know voodoo's everywhere there i mean everywhere yeah. voodoo stuff all over the place <clears throat> you'll be walking along and you'll see this um like a uh, just a dive in the middle of nowhere and it'll have voodoo symbols all over it and everything and it's it's like a voodoo club or something it's, um all kinds of crazy stuff goes on there 
but it's but you know when you see that and then you start thinking about it and you're like hey i can bring this in and bring that in and uh the next thing you know you know it just it, it all fits so well uh, yeah because it's really diverse that you have um like the first one is kind of a slasher mm -hmm. um the middle one is we're going to say about witches and then the last one has voodoo in it so right they're connected but they're not connected <laughs> right i mean it's it's really great because it gives you diversity in in the book okay appreciate that and um well anyway we'll keep on going a little bit on that first um but if you have any more questions about within um no i think that was it because you answered because i wasn't sure where it fit in if it fit into extreme or splatterpunk i wasn't sure but no you kind of clarified that so yeah, I, I really, uh, Splatterpunk is such a strange thing. I mean, I've only been reading extreme books probably for the last, uh, less than a year. I mean, probably yeah. uh, probably since a little bit before author comics. <laughs> I, I think, actually, I think the very first uh, extreme book I ever read, honestly, was uh, Justin Boots, uh, The Undead Possession. Uh, I, th I honestly think that was the first, uh, well, unless you count uh, Jack Ketchum, which the girl next door. Right, was. yeah. But anyway, his his book was really one of the first extreme books I'd ever written or ever uh, read. And yeah. Uh, and the funny thing is, it's actually, I think, one of the first ones he ever did. One of the first. It, yeah, it, it was. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever uh, he, you know, he gave me an arc on one of those and uh, I started reading it and oh, man, it was like, gosh, that's that's some good stuff, dude. And I, I already knew man, he was he was definitely going to go that route. <laughs> uh, but uh but once I once I read that and I thought, yeah, I kind of I kind of like this, you know, I mean, I can uh, I don't think I would 100 percent write in it all the time, but I think I could probably do a little bit with it and uh, try and do that. I found with in, the, you know, when I was writing within and as extreme as it got, it's really hard to do for me now, not for everybody. A lot of people think that, you know, oh, extreme is splatter punk. That's just throw it out there and it's done. But. For me, I thought it was it was hard to write because you had to be, you know, you, you don't with me. It was so hard to you know, I wanted to go over the top, but yeah. I didn't really think I went over the top. <laughs> so no, but, no, 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 I didn't think at all I went over the top. But um, but I guess just that ability to do that, just to let go. It, it's hard for me to do. Um, I can write horror. I can write cool horror scenes. I can write good, creepy scenes. And that's what I really like to write. Yeah. Um, but. Um, but just going, you know, all out, blood, gut, score, everything. It's it's not easy. It's hard to do for me. But so, but but within is probably the closest I'm ever going to get to that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because I think it would be hard for me as well. Um, because I I don't read it. So then yeah. when I started reading this one, I was like, well, this is a bit more extreme than what yeah, I right. I write read. But yeah. it yeah, it's, it's definitely not over the top. Yeah. Um, which I think is good. It, it works for what it is and what's happening at, in the moments. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's just gratuitous. Oh, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the, yeah. And, and, and I, I, you know, that's another thing. I definitely wanted the plot and I wanted it all to be, I didn't want yeah. it to just gore for gore's sake. Yeah. I that's right. Plot yeah. There. So, uh, but, but it was a little bit of an experiment for me and, you know, I, I, I tried to do it. And of course, yeah, I'm looking at the reviews. I think I pulled it off. So, <laughs> yeah, you're getting a lot of really good reviews. I see that. That's great, especially for just coming out. I didn't write that down. Um, you just dropped it in, was it June? July? No, ju yeah, July. No, was it or was it June? Uh, I can't. I have remember. it right here. I can click on it. <laughs> I just didn't have it open because I had your whole screen July. open there. It might have been June. Might have been June. It was June 13th. June 13th. Yeah. Okay. And it all goes together. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I did like, uh, <laughs> as it came out, I did like a month long, uh, Florida, sort of like a mini tour, I called it. But uh, yes. I went to like libraries and I went to some bookstores and uh, went to a festival, uh, local festival and stuff. And yeah. So, how did all that go? Because I, I was seeing it coming up on Facebook. It went well. It went well. I really enjoyed it. Um, the last one was really cool. I mean, they were all cool, but the last one uh, at Wheatberry in Chillicothe was pretty cool uh, because I got to uh, actually read, you know, the book. So I got, yeah. I got up, I was able to read a story and I got to do all that. And I, I love the, the uh, uh, stuff you put on there for the picture. I was trying to get everybody to do that. And you did a good job. On that one. 
no oh, thank you with the axe and the a sandwich and everything <laughs> yeah i know that was funny <laughs> that was, yeah i like that i could have done more but i was like come on other people you have to jump in here and get some stuff in um <laughs> but was, were other people reading as well that day like or no just me was it just it was just you just so me. you had to go in hoping that people showed up yeah pretty much oh god how was that that must have been terrifying a little bit and i had i had tickets i gave away i had I, they gave me so oh, okay to play and i did that but yeah uh, but you know it, and it's but like like the last minute a lot of people cancel and stuff but so the, yeah. the place itself they gave away tickets too which i was glad because we had a few you know but we had maybe not a bunch we had a few extras that were just people i didn't know a lot of them i did know but then a lot of them yeah I didn't. So it oh kind that's of, fun yeah it was uh, i got some good questions from those people so that worked out well <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because then it can also um, give you other ideas mm-hmm. for changes or whatever that you need to do moving forward as an author, right? Right. Yeah, yep. no, that's that's great. Yeah, you get a little feel for it. Um, I've done, um, like, it's been, oh gosh, it was before COVID because after COVID they shut all, they shut all that down. Yeah. We had an open mic place at a local uh, uh, pub here, and uh, we used to go in there and uh, we would, I would throw, you know, ideas off people. Like if I had a... Um, a uh, short story maybe i had um you know a few pages written i would read that just to get the audience really? and stuff and that was kind of fun you know oh well, that that's interesting things. Mm-hmm. yeah i don't know if i'd want to do that but yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's fun um because at, at first you know you go up there and you don't know anybody and then, yeah. uh, then once you get to know you know you get some friends you know a few people and then you get up there and there's a couple they're always there uh, yeah and then you start uh, other people come in and it's kind of neat to, you know, cause you get, sometimes you'll get like a, a whole crowd of people that you've never seen before. Right. And sometimes you'll be just people, you know, so it goes both. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun because it, and some of the stuff that they throw out, it's like, it's like smash poetry. It's just everything. I mean, just, you just imagine it. Some of it's like beating it kind of stuff where you think you should be snapping your fingers or something. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We do actually have a kind of like an artsy cafe in town that does that kind of thing. But I've always thought, well, who wants to listen to me standing there and read? But yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I wouldn't read a whole novel there, but I, well, no, no, of course I, not. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun though. I'm, yeah, I should try it one time just to just to do it, see what happens. Right? That's how you yeah. learn everything. That's exactly. I mean, that's how you do. Me, I'm such a. I'm the kind of person that I really don't shy away from too many things. If somebody says, "Hey, let's try this," okay. <laughs> yeah. If I fall on my face, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of learned to do that since since yeah. jumping into writing. But yeah, yeah, it's it's the only way to to get out there and do it, right? That's you exactly. just got to try, and the worst that can happen is someone will say no. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So, what is it that you're working on next? Oh boy. Um, well, uh, within uh, I just uh, did a poll. Um, I actually have two two uh, expansion stories. I'm calling them right now. From that, um, one is uh, from Hurt, and the other one's from The Devil's Concubine. Um, I don't have a name for either one of them yet, um, but I'm uh, the one. I'm probably. Uh, I'm over 20,000 words in on that one. Uh, but that's the one that I polled people on, on Facebook. I did a little poll, ask, uh, you know, what one, if they wanted one of those stories to become, you know, to expand on, which one would it be? Oh, I must have missed it. Yeah. And it was on my Facebook page, I think. Yeah. Oh, but everybody picked the middle one. Every, <laughs> everybody wants to see Harper go on and, you know, kick ass again, I guess. Yeah. So, oh, that's great. Yeah, and and that one, uh, as soon as I started getting those poll results after a little while, I kind of had a feeling it was going to be that one anyway. And I was farther ahead on that one than I was the other one. So I just took off and started writing a bunch uh, the other day. And now, like I said, I'm over 20,000 words. And hopefully um, I'll top out around thirty to 40,000, but who knows? Mm-hmm. If it go farther. We'll see. <laughs> it's turned into a pretty good story so far, so I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, so that'll be a standalone novella? Yeah uh well sort of i mean it will but it'll be yeah. it'll be part of a series because it'll be like um my but, my yeah. ultimate goal is to uh take that one and uh and do one from uh, the devil's concubine also later and then do like you know good series off of those and maybe do another couple of books off of the off of hurt and another couple off the of devil's concubine and just okay. 
Harper series and the Katie series, if, if I can make it work. I mean, if the story, if the ideas just keep coming, then I'll just keep writing it. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, right? There's too many ideas and not there enough time. I mean, I have a, and I also, uh, well, okay, so I got that out of the way. Um, I have a full novel that I'm revising right now. Um, and uh, I call it, uh, so far, I mean, the working title is Menagerie Park. And it's a uh, book about um, these, it's, it's set, it's set a, a, a theme park in the middle of Cincinnati, Ohio. And one day uh, they're having a New Year's Eve party there. They're getting ready to shut down for the season. And these giants come out of the ground. Nobody knows why, but they just pop up and they, they have the, this herd of animals with them. And they, they're spurring the animals on. The animals are biting people and killing them right there in the park. And they come back after, well, at first they die and then the, yeah. then the locals come and they, nobody's at the park. can't find anybody. Everybody bang. A year later, they all come back, and, but they can't leave the park. They're more or less ghosts. So, okay. And, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, it, but uh, menagerie comes from the, because um, uh, the animals are a big part of this. And, and if you, if you look at the history of a, a menagerie, it was basically a zoo before zoos became zoos. Um, and it was a, um, like uh, rich people and kings would have uh, menageries of animals in their palaces. And okay. people um, and pet the animals and see them and different things. From, and they're more like trophies to the kings and things. But they always called it a menagerie. And so later it became a zoo. But uh, so that's where menagerie comes from. Very yeah. interesting. Uh, it, it's going to be an interesting book, and it, it's taken a lot of uh, twists and turns. Uh, and I got almost to the end, couldn't come up with an ending for it. I pretty much think I know where I'm going with it, but I just stopped and I just put it on the. <laughs> and so now I'm going back <clears throat> and revising a bunch of it. So it's it's changing. Parts of it are changing. Right. Uh, it's expanded the word count quite a bit, but it's you know it's getting. Uh, I think I'm at uh, like ninety seven thousand words now because. <sighs> It's the biggest one I've ever, I've never written a novel in size. So. Yeah, that's, that's that all, a big one. <laughs> it is a big one. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, that um, I'm, I'm simultaneously working on Harper story while I'm working on that one. Yeah. But Harper's story is just, you know, free writing. So I'm just, I'm, you know, just writing it. I'm pants and I'm doing a panster thing on that all the way. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so it, it's kind of, it's not too hard to be able to, you know, do that and then do, the revisions on the other story on the side so yeah yeah i, I know how that goes yeah uh I, i'm glad I, it's something i've never done before so <laughs> it's new to me but oh really uh, yeah i've never done that before i've never tried to revise a story and work on another one at the same time but it's working i mean i'm able to do it i just i don't know how i'm able to do it I, but i'm doing it <laughs> so i'm just gonna keep it going <laughs> well i know sometimes like for myself if i'm writing one thing and then i kind of I just get to a point where it's like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen next, next, because I am a hundred percent pantser. Yeah, I will go start the other story or work on the other story. So I'll usually have two in progress at the same time. Okay. And then also short stories in the middle of that, right? So it's like, oh, I see a call yeah. for a short story, so I got to write that now. So yeah, yeah, it's always a lot of projects going on at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely do the short story thing like that. Um, used to. I it would take me uh, months to get one short story the way I wanted it into an anthology. And now it's just like, you know, I, just, I get an idea and I can just write that in one day and just have it ready yeah. to go. Popping them out. <clears throat> but you're right though. It's just like, you see a call now. It's not like you're you're take you're writing short stories actively looking all the time. It's just, you see a call and you think, Hey, that'd be interesting. I'm like, I got an idea yes. for that. And there you go. <laughs> I know. And then sometimes if you get rejected, now you're stuck with the story that was specific to that call. And now you're like, what do I do? Well, I, uh, that's what I have with my book, uh, Hurt, the same way. <laughs> yeah. Got rejected and then I'm stuck with that story. And I thought, oh, I got to do something with it. And so I started expanding it. And there yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a good way to, to get other stuff out there as well. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. So you've got a lot going on and you already have a lot that's um, published. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wait, uh, one more uh, yeah. thing I, I found out today. I've got my, do you see my Books of Horror shirt? Can you see it? Yeah, let me see if I can I can hide this. There you go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's represent... a good shirt. <laughs> because <laughs> the, uh, I just got a story accepted for the um, Community Anthology Volume 4. So I'm in there now. Along Fantastic. With wonderfully talented authors there's a, there's a list too long for me to even get into 
but they're yeah. all great. <laughs> is that gonna come out in october for like halloween I'm not sure i think october okay probably think... it's kind of like that timeline right I mean, it, I just found out today, and uh, I've been like, I've, I've just before we got on here, I was on Facebook talking to different people, and now, uh, yeah, I just uh, when you get there's a uh, there's a group page on Facebook, and it's a private page, and they invite you to it. When they do, you pop it up, and it says congratulations, and then boom, go from there. And there's like tons of people on there commenting. And stuff. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great little community. I love books of horror. Though. That's one of my favorites. I go there a lot. <laughs> Well, and it's just like uh, you, me, Justin. Mm -hmm. um, I know I stay in contact with Lucy. I'm not sure if you do. I can't think of who else. But, I mean, we all met in the right practice yeah. mm -hmm. back in, what, 2015? Oh, 2016? 2016, somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, and then we've done <laughs> anthologies together. We are on that one Facebook group, mm -hmm. which I don't even know if it's active anymore. I know. <laughs> I don't, I don't but it's funny so. how a few of us have just always stayed in contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so i was uh which you know carol you know carol wolf she was on there but she's a romance writer but yeah uh, yeah she had posted something on facebook and i told her i said uh she was like posting her number one uh, that she had number one status on one of her books and i just had a number one status on one of my books so yeah so uh but i was telling her i said it's kind of cool isn't it now we're in here i said i said remember when we were just uh, still trying to get critiques and stuff on the right practice <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty amazing. It is. It is. It's fun. I'll, I'll, I'll have to see if Justin will do an interview because yeah. he he's the one I'm most proud of oh, because yeah. he was always so introverted. He wouldn't show his face. He wasn't going to publish anything. He was just doing little bits here and there. And now look at him. He's blown up. He's bigger than all of us. He is. He's got, he's, uh, he's got a really good following over there. So group and stuff. Yeah, it's it's great. I'm so yeah, happy the, for him. The cat, the cat, I don't know if the cat, I think sometimes I think the fat cat gets a little more. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, Justin's all right. I, I've never seen him do a live interview, though, so good luck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's took, it took him a few years to, to even put his face up, right? He always had that, um, it was like nos, nostra, I can't even pronounce it. Um, the, um, Nostra, Nostra, Nostra. Well, it's like Nostratu, but it's the one from Salem's Lot. It's uh, right, like, yes, because he yeah, was blue. That's, one from, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, on there, on there, I laughed. I used to laugh so much. I said, Why don't you just put your ears in? Nope, <laughs> <So>, okay. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, but it's great that, that we're all able to stay connected and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Facebook's really wonderful for that. And for us to finally get to talk face to face, we've never done that before. Uh, no, we haven't. No, that's new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty I cool. try to do um, interviews. I don't do a whole lot of them because they do take up time. And I do like to read the books before I interview the author. So I do tend to stick more with people that um, we've been supporting each other through all of these years to try and, you know, just get you more hopefully eyes and readers and yeah. people interested in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And of course, once this is posted, it will go up on um, YouTube as well. And oh. I'll put the link to your Amazon page okay. right in the comments there. So anyone you. watching this, if you don't want to go search for him, you can just click in the comments and it'll be there. And if you go there, I'm also, I mean, I don't know which one you're, are you putting the uh, personal page or the uh, author page? I'll put your author page. Okay, that works. Yeah, because that has everything yeah. li mm -hmm. listed, right? And then uh, your website as well. Yes. You know, it's, it's, I'll just drop it in. It's easy enough. If there's anything you want to drop in, just go in the comments and drop them in too. Okay. Um, I know we can do comments here. I'm not sure if they stay. Uh -huh. Oh, we actually have a a commenter, uh, oh. Ben Young. Oh. Hey. Hi, Ben. Don't know if you're still watching. You came in at eight. It says the first story was his favorite. Oh, cool, cool. I like Ben. Now, hey, me and Ben are uh, sharing a table at AuthorCon next year. How are you? AuthorCon, yeah, we'll be AuthorCon 3 in uh, Williamsburg. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, great. I met Ben at the last AuthorCon. Uh, he's uh, he's a new author, uh, getting ready to release his first novel. And uh, we got to talking, and uh, the, he, him and uh, our wives, and we all got to talking and everything, hanging out a little bit there at the AuthorCon. And uh, one thing led to another, we just started, you know, me and Ben, we talk all the time now. <laughs> he's still there. <laughs> hey, Hi, Ben. ben. <laughs> Well, so you'll see that um, Ed just gave you a nice plug there. So, yep. you know, everyone, anyone else watching will have to check out your book when it drops. Yes, it is. Hang on. 
it is do, 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 do. I'll find it here. I want to kind of find it and show it to you all on the page. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just posting his comment here. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So go ahead. I just, you know, we were both so busy talking and I, I always look people in the eye when I'm talking to them. So I didn't notice okay. comments were coming up. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm sure I, I'd be like, I probably wouldn't even notice them at all. <laughs> yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> horror, horror authors kick ass. I'm with you there, buddy. <laughs> That's right. That is so right. Uh, there he is. So Ben, tell us what your yeah. book is while he's looking for you there. You see this? Uh, it comes up faster. <laughs> you see it? Stuck is the name of it. Stuck. Yeah. Yes. Stuck. All right. Is that it? What oh. is, it looks like a picture of someone with a flashlight. Is that yeah. someone Ooh. in the dark with a flashlight? Like in a cave. I think. Cool. It's that, but no, that's, it's going to be, he's, uh, that's his new book and it will be out soon. Uh, and it's going to be great. So, <laughs> um, okay. I've read of, uh, Ben's stuff, uh, I've read, uh, some of his short stories and stuff and it's really, there it is. It's like Shutter Island in a cave. You got In it. a cave. Yeah. Fantastic. We'll check it out. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll, like I said, we'll both be in, uh, author con three together in williamsburg sharing a table there's gonna be so many tables there it's it's insane they they uh everybody well it wasn't for ben i wouldn't have a table so he helped me out on that one we right. both jumped in the you know he was he was there ahead of me and he's like all right ready to go and he jumped in before i did and he got a table because <laughs> there was like a lag in the uh because everybody was trying to get a table all at once and, oh really yeah a lot of authors who, uh, you know, big name authors who uh, are, have, you know, always in that kind of thing. And uh, they, uh, they didn't get in. So, uh, or the, the, but after, after the fact, they were able to share tables with people. But it, yeah. it, it took a, it, it definitely was uh, pretty, pretty intense here for a while. A lot of people I don't, we don't have things like that around here. So you're pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what month is that in? Uh, April, April. The... April. Okay. So not until spring. Yeah, I think it's April. I think it's the second week of April, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. I have to go to um, a horror con, <clears throat> so okay. it's not quite the same thing. Mm -hmm. Tables are expensive, um, mm -hmm. but the good thing is I get to dress up in costume, which I absolutely love. So, oh, cool. that's it's a lot of fun for that. I've, now I've got one coming up in. Um, uh, when is it? It's coming up in October, October thirteenth and fourteenth. It's called Void Con, and it's in Huntington, West Virginia. So I got that coming up too. Oh, perfect. Okay. And that's about uh, Huntington's about an hour from me, so it's not very far. Uh, Williamsburg's a little bit farther. That's like that's like about an eight-hour drive. So. Oh yeah, I could probably find author stuff like that too. I just oh yeah, I don't travel. That yeah, well, I don't blame you. Worry. I mean, in uh, I'm sure stuff around Canada that you could probably. Yeah, probably because I'm actually about an hour outside of Toronto. Oh yeah. So I'm sure there's stuff that happens oh, all yeah. the time in Toronto, but oh. I'm just like I don't have the energy. I have yeah. enough writing and marketing and everything uh, else to do right it's a lot i mean they're fun you know they're a blast to go to they're and they're and as far as i'm you know the, the great thing about AuthorCon, i thought was the more of the networking kind of thing i mean yes. i sold a few books and stuff and i got my name out there that way but i networked with a lot of authors that you know i always see on facebook but never really got to meet face to face and um so I got to talk to a lot of them and they kind of, you know, gave me some tips and tricks and things to look for and what to watch and stuff like that. And yeah. So pretty cool. <laughs> it is. It is great for that. Yeah. I, I just seem to be friends with more Americans in UK. Than, yeah. oh. I have a few Canadians, but not, not enough yet. Yeah. No, I, uh, I have a lot of friends uh, in both places. I mean, Canada too, but uh, definitely UK and the US, probably the bulk of them for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you're up, you're up there in Duncan Ralston territory too. So, <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, right. He owns Canada, right? I think. Isn't he the president up there or something? No. He's not? Oh, I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we won't even get into that. <laughs> no politics. No politics. Okay. <laughs> we don't we don't talk about it down here either, trust me. No, I know. <laughs> uh -uh. I don't even see it on Facebook anymore. I think everyone's just like, we'll be quiet, maybe it'll go away. Shut up about it. <laughs> uh, okay.
Okay. So how long have you been writing for? Uh, it, uh, did you just start after like the right practice, start publishing like a lot of us, 2016, 2017? Uh, yeah, uh, 2017 was when I first published my first short story. Uh, okay. 17. But uh, novels now, 2021 was my first novel. Uh, so I waited a while before I jumped into the novel thing. Um, right. I had one uh, small um, like novelette that I released. Uh, Actually, well, actually, it was it was Lost Hope, but it was the uh, the original version of it was a lot smaller, and I published it through a uh, through a publishing company that's no longer around. Uh, but uh, they when they fell apart, I got all my uh, rights back to it and everything, and uh, just kind of set it to the side. Um, but when I wrote my uh, when I wrote um, uh, Tent Revival and then the one, <clears throat> um, when the one ended, I found a way to connect it to Lost Hope. And uh, added, a, I had to add quite a bit to Lost Stuff to make it work. But once I got it all, right. everything it turned into a bigger book, and uh, then I was able to publish it as the third book in the series. So it worked out well. Good. Yeah, yeah. You have a nice little uh, collection here, so that's great. Yeah, my uh, big cartel on my uh, store, uh, which that will be that's on my web or on Facebook too. That's on my. Uh, I have a link to that. Okay. Uh, but uh, on Big Cartel. Um, I have all, I have those in a bundle deal. So I've got those and I've got all my uh, other books on there too. Great. I should say my other books, but actually none of my short story collections, just my novels. That's all it's on there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But anyway. yeah, it's, okay. Yeah. But anyway, it's on there. So I got, I, so if anybody wanted to go there and get a bundle or whatever. So when are we expecting the next one to drop? Do you have an idea or is it still open-ended because <laughs> okay. you're working on it? Yeah, well, I'm kind of there. Um, I would, I mean, I would absolutely love end of September, but big time fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> that's, okay. that's what I would love to see. But if not, know. at least Halloween, right? At least. At Give least. us a Halloween book. Yes, at least. Right. My, you should have one. Okay. Uh, I doubt my novel will be completely done by then. Um, <clears throat> by that time, it'll probably be either with uh, a beta reader or editor or something. Uh, depending on if I self-publish it or not. I mean, if I can find a publisher for it, I might do that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's another thing I'd like to bring up is my sure. publishing deal for next year. Um, I don't know. I mean, many people might know I've, I've uh, been uh, picked up by D&T uh, &T Publishing. For, yes. Uh, yes. You and, just posted that the other day. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's next year, uh, either end of this year or next year. They haven't given me a tentative date yet. Um, that will be... Um, but it, it's called Soul Mirror, and it's uh, the, if you see the description on the DNT page, it's like a, they call it a, uh, a, a what have they describe it? It's like it's like a a, a fucked up uh, Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass story, and that, right. that's a pretty good description. So <clears throat> it's pretty wild. <laughs> well, congratulations! So is that one already written, and it's just in no. like editing, mm -hmm. ready, getting ready to go? Yep, they'll be uh, doing the edits for it and everything, and uh, I don't know, you know, from there, they haven't given me any details, so we'll see. Okay, so you're just uh, waiting for them to give yeah, you a date. Exactly. Perfect. And another thing, I forgot to mention this. No, that's good. Get on my little paper there. Uh, this book is uh, very soon will be an audio book. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I signed the uh, contract for that, and uh, Fright Night Audio, um, the company by Joe Hempel, uh, the one he just started, um, he's uh, he picked my book up. So uh, I signed the contracts and everything. So that'll be out soon. They even have a narrator already. So uh, that's good. all. Good. So I haven't, uh, beyond that, I don't know anything that's going on. It's it's on Instagram. They show it on there more than they do Facebook. But uh, but it's on there. And then it, if you go to the Fright Night audio page, uh, you'll see the my book, the narrator, all that on there. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll definitely have to drop some links into the um, to the YouTube channel afterwards, so they'll be in all the comments. And then, yeah. I mean, if people don't already, you know, we want them to follow you on Facebook and yeah. mm -hmm. check out your website, all of that, and you can get the details there. Or if you're just going to watch this live, pick them up from there. I also, uh, yeah, I mean, I can tell you what I could do. I could just put my link tree down there because well, that's got everything. Perfect. Like yeah. Do. Let's do that. And then that's got all my social media feeds, everything. Uh, it's got my online shop. It's got everything on there. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Drop that on there. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Uh, excited about that audio book. That was just, that came out of nowhere. And I was just like, wow. I mean, you know, and, and well, um, you know, uh, Carver Pike, 
uh, the yeah. author of this extreme stuff. Well, um, he's one I met at AuthorCon too. I mean, I've known I've known him online before, but I never met him in person. Mm -hmm. Great guy, him and his wife. We talked to him, him and uh, my wife. We've all become friends, and um, we talked for a while and everything. And um, he uh, he's the one that uh, pulled it up, put it up on Facebook that. Uh, the link to everything and I told I commented I said yeah I check it he said yeah go ahead try it out I mean, you should get over there and I did and boom here we are <laughs> that's great yeah it's it's exciting it just came out of nowhere and I was very excited about that yeah you have a lot of stuff on the go which is fantastic you know that's always what you want to see moving on moving forward and hopefully yeah. getting more sales yeah definitely my last, my last uh, promo did really well, so I, I stayed at number one for three days straight. So yeah, I saw that. That was that was fantastic. <laughs> that was something new. <laughs> All kinds of new stuff happening. <laughs> and that's how it should be. Yes, that's exactly how it should be. Perfect. Okay, so I think we've uh, covered all the bases. Okay. Got everything. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. No, it was uh, really great talking with you today, and I hope we get a lot of eyeballs on this for you and mm -hmm. get some more stuff going. Okay. Um. Well, I'll talk to you in a minute about the links. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds yeah good. I'll um. I'll just sign off the broadcast, and then you and I can talk about a couple of things off air. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good night. Peace out. <laughs>